Europe obviously uh, is not short of political overhangs at this point of time. I think the most uh, impactful overhangs are obviously Brexit, but also the trade um, issues, which have not affected Europe directly uh, so far, but might uh, actually affect them. Both issues actually have a very low visibility, so it's very difficult to come up with a scenario to actually incorporate this into investment decisions. However, on the other side, we have to see that European equities are already on very low valuations. If you look at dividend yield, if you look at PE, for example, so the question to ask is also how much of this is already being priced in? So have we probably already prepared for the worst case scenario? So if we get any relief on one of these overhangs, for example, the risk might actually be to the upside. It's a question of the price, it's a question of the current valuation, and it seems that at this point of time, a lot of the negatives, of the potential negatives, is already in the price. Yes, there's another angle to look at European equities. One of the observations um, on the market currently is that a lot of investors have been drifting towards the growth and, and in particular the tech segment. And it has served them well, obviously, because performance was, was very good. But you're getting to valuation levels, you're getting to a situation where this might become a certain unbalanced uh, positioning. So the question uh, to ask is obviously, are you going to stick with this kind of bias in your portfolio or do you want to make a move and balance out your portfolio? And this is where European equities actually could be very helpful. You're obviously buying more of the old economy, you're buying more of the mature uh, companies, but you're buying them also at a high dividend yield, for example, which should give you some uh, protection. So it might exactly be what you need to balance out an otherwise tech-biased uh, portfolio. That could be an interesting um, other angle why you would want to look at European equities. Dividend investing has a, has a few interesting features. On the one side, there's obviously the potential to generate the income, so this gives you a certain reliability in your returns. It's something you can uh, start planning with, but it also has uh, a certain um, characteristics on the, on the risk side. What we can observe, what we have historically observed, is that dividend portfolios, true dividend portfolios, have a, a certain feature of risk mitigation. So they do fluctuate less than the market and also drawdowns tend to be less uh, than the market. A good example for this was, for example, the fourth quarter last year when the market came quite a bit under pressure. The dividend companies, the portfolio of dividend companies was able to actually decouple um, quite a bit from this market movement. So it provides a certain protection on the downside and this is because you have the anchor point of the dividend yield. Um, the companies are managed for the dividends so they need to uh, provide reliable cash flows to keep up this promise of the dividend. So overall this obviously takes out some of the risk and makes them fluctuate less as compared to the market. Non-Lun